Controlling a tiny robot is maybe as close as you can come to shrinking yourself down. I think machines like these are going to take us into all kinds of amazing worlds that are too small to see. Say Mark Meskin, the assistant professor at the University of Pennsylvania. YouTube channel. Today, our topic will be about a microscopic robot that has been developed by Cornell University after their researchers and that can be used in the field of medication. So, let's get going. Cornell University research have developed a microscopic robot that measures uh, 5 microns thick, 40 microns wide and 40 to 70 microns long and also are laser activated. The brain as well as bodies are essentially a simple silicon photovoltaic circuit used to power their legs which are made of electrochemical actuators and strips of platinum. When it, it's time to move, uh, lasers are fired onto the body's photovoltaic uh, sending a positive electric charge streaming into the platinum. The absorption of the electric charge results in the platinum leg bending while uh, also not breaking under the stress of this repeated action. For a continued moment, photovoltaics are blasted in its body with laser pulses. A separate circuit is targeted by each of these pulses thus controlling a separate set of legs. You know what? It is hoped that one day these tiny robots can be used to navigate body fluids and clear the plaque in blood vessels and also to repair them. The experts were able to make one million of four-legged robots out of a 10 centimeter wafer of silicon. However, these robots have some limitations, such as they are slower than the other swimming robots, and uh, they are not able to make sense of their environment and also they lack the integrated control. Okay, so now we have a rough idea about what are those microchip morphs and now we will go through some of the quotations from the authors of this study. While these robots are primitive in their functions, they are not very fast. They don't have a lot of computational capability. The motivation that we made to make them compatible with standard microchip fabrication opened the door, making these microscopic robots math fast and mass producible. From Professor Itai Cohen, who is one of the authors of the study, controlling a tiny robot is maybe as close as you can come to shrinking yourself down. Say, Professor Mark. Meskin, another author of the study. So, what we can say is that this is just the first shot across the ball which says, hey, we can do electronic integration on these tiny robots. These researchers say that now they are looking for ways to give these robots more complicated electronics and onboard computation. These changes, they hope, could enable the robots to be one day used in the medical settings inside the human body uh, repairing tissues or exploring brains. Okay, so now we know who are those microscopic robots and what are the expectations and what are the plans of the authors of this study. So now, let's move on to some of the questions that you might be having now. First question. What are the energy sources of these robots? Well, radio frequency and laser rays are the energy sources that these microscopic robots are using. Second question. 
How do they store energy? Do they use nanotechnological batteries or something? Well, that is true that these robots can be controlled remotely using radio waves, so they don't need batteries. They will use radio waves wherever they want it. Third question, what kind of mechanism do these microscopic robots use? Well, building robots at the micro scale is tricky, particularly when it comes to designing small scale actuators uh, the motors that allow the robots to move. The mechanism these robots use is kind of like a magnetism and, and are difficult to integrate with a traditional silicon based microelectronics. Okay, so now we know what are those microscopic robots and why do we use them and what are the expectations that their authors have for them and what kind of mechanism that they use. I think you have learned something new and interesting in our today's video. If you liked our video, go ahead, give it a thumb up. And if you still haven't subscribed to Taxis, go ahead and subscribe us. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you will never miss any of my new videos. And also, I would really appreciate your comments down in the comment section. Leave your comments about today's video and about what would you like to like me to bring out in my next video as well. So, until we meet with another interesting video, bye-bye.